This is a 900 megahertz Intel motherboard, Pentium 3, with 384 megabytes of RAM and a 20 gig hard drive. To create your Ubuntu server install CD-ROM, you simply go to the Ubuntu website and go to Downloads. We're not going to install the latest version of 9.04. For our desktop machine, we did use the latest 9.04 version. But for the server version, we're going to lean towards uh, more stable deployments for production use and we're going to choose the 8.04.3 download which has the longest support time window. So download the ISO image then use your favorite burning software to burn the install CD-ROM. Now before you start your installation you want to make sure that your computer has the correct BIOS settings to boot up first on the CD-ROM. On this motherboard you press F2 as it's booting up. This machine has a RAM test which we'll let complete. We pressed F2 to enter setup. On some machines you might have to press the delete key. We're now in the setup for this motherboard and BIOS and we do have the CD-ROM set as the first boot device so that's good. Now we will insert the CD-ROM and restart the machine. As we wait for the Ubuntu server installer to boot up, let's first talk about our partitioning plan because partitioning the hard disk drive will be the first step of the installation. We have a 19 gigabyte hard drive. Now, in, on many servers in production, for security reasons and um, to isolate corruption and to prevent uh, a, a partition that's filling up because of excessive logging, for example, to prevent that from spilling and, and filling up other critical partitions, you might have many reasons to create separate partitions for separate mount points like slash home or slash var in a real production environment. Those are nuances we can get into later, but for now, to, to, to begin this project, we're going to put everything having to do with Ubuntu Linux underneath a single partition. So the slash mount point will be a 12 gigabyte primary partition where everything will go. Now, we will create an extended partition into which we could now put unlimited additional partitions. But we will put, and, and those additional partitions are called logical partitions or logical drives. So in that one extended partition we'll create, we'll put two. For the first one will be a one gigabyte swap space. And the last one will be a six gigabyte data space, which is essentially our leftover space. And we'll just turn it into usable space and mount it at slash data. And we could do anything we want to with it. We could put a large database there. We could do hot backups there or we could repartition it into multiple partitions down the road to do a multi-boot or anything we chose to do. Rather than leave it as empty space though, an unused space, we're going to turn it into a usable partition so we have more flexibility. And now the Ubuntu installer is running. Our first task is to select our language and then we won't do any special options, we'll just go straight into the installation. And again, we select our language. We select our country. We will go ahead and do automatic keyboard detection. I'm going to do this quickly. It's really just answering some questions about your keyboard and pressing keys. You look for the character that you have that's shown each time, and then you press it, and that allows the installer to detect your keyboard. It correctly detected a U.S. keyboard. 
One thing to note that's slightly different when doing partitioning for the server version, rather uh, compared to the desktop version, well, aside from the fact that it's completely different partitioning software, and it does it does show you fairly different things and behave a little differently. One thing that's noteworthy is that we'll have to manually set the bootable flag on our primary partition that holds all of our Linux installation. On the desktop GUI partitioner, you don't have you don't have any questions you can answer regarding setting a bootable flag. So the assumption is that it sets the bootable flag on the partition that receives the slash boot partition. The first question you're asked with the installer is to choose a host name. We've decided that we're going to call our primary Ubuntu server Core. We choose our time zone, which is Pacific. The partitioner has now started. We are going to do manual partition as we did for the desktop installation. In this case, we only have a single empty hard drive we can choose. We do want to create a new empty partition table on this device. At this point you would lose any data if you had any on this disk. We now want to go into the free space created as a single primary partition on this disk. Hit enter. Now we want to create a new partition and here we're going to create the single 12 gigabyte partition as a primary partition. In the past I've noticed this partitioner to be slightly touchy for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and include the space between the number and the gigabytes there. And carefully read everything as it goes to make sure it's getting the sizes correct. This first one will be a primary. Creating it at the beginning of the empty space is correct. We do want an ext3 file system. Mount point of slash is correct. We don't need to change any other options except for the bootable flag. We do have to change that. Bootable flag is now set to on. We're now done setting up this partition. We select this option and hit enter. Now Everything looks good with this first primary partition into which all of Ubuntu will go. The bootable flag is set as you can see here by this B. Now in our 8.4 gigabytes of free space, we're going to create another partition. This one is going to be one gigabyte in size. This is going to be our swap space. This one is going to be a logical partition. Again, the reason it's a logical partition is because you can create up to four primary partitions on any hard disk. One of those can be sacrificed to become an extended partition, which then can contain an unlimited number of logical partitions. We could have made multiple primary partitions, but what makes the most sense here is to make one primary, then one extended, with everything we want after that in there, which is only a swap and, and a data partition. So we just chose logical partition for the swap space we're now creating. Beginning is correct. Now we do have to change some options here. Actually we can ignore the rest of these options because as soon as we change the type of space to swap area the other options will go away because swap has very few options that go with it. We will not set a bootable flag on the swap area. 